FCC. Coliseum in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, where the tide has rolled to 20 straight home wins. They hope to make the Tigers of LSU victim number 21 tonight. A place where Alabama doesn't lose often. They're 11 and 3 on the year. Tonight they take on the Tigers of LSU at 8 and 4. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nestler with Larry Conley, and welcome to Tuscaloosa. Larry, last week you saw LSU end that long string of road losses with their win over Auburn, so they're on a little bit of a roll now. They've had a rest leading up to this game tonight. They come in against Alabama, a team that doesn't lose much here, and it's a classic case of a great backcourt and a great inside matchup. Brad, I'll tell you, the backcourt of LSU is as good as anybody in the country. You talk about Randy Livingston, he's leading the nation in assists. He feeds a steady diet of those passes to the man who is the leading scorer in the SEC, Ronnie Henderson, and it's fattened his average up to 23 points per game. And as we've seen from Alabama in the past couple of years, they've got some guys inside that can get it done in a variety oh, of ways. Do, do they ever? Antonio McDice is the total package inside. He can do everything. He boards, he's strong back to the basket, but he also is helped by Jason Caffrey, who since he's been starting, is averaging 10 rebounds a game on the inside. A possible number one pick in the first round a terrific player it is still early in the conference season but this is a very important game top spot in the SEC West on the line Alabama home to LSU when we come back finally a show about it is more powerful than two-way radios twice its size when your winning game plan requires reliable communications call Tomba the communications team you can depend on Set for LSU and Alabama. Let's meet the starting lineup first for the visiting Tigers of Dale Brown. Here's how it looks. Henderson and Livingston, we talked about the backcourt. Nolly, Mutavich, and Clarence Caesar, the wily old veteran on the front line, Larry. Yeah, one of the SEC's leading career steel men. Alabama by David Hobbs, uh, coach to Marvin Orange and Artie Griffin in the backcourt. Caffey and McDice up front. Eric Washington has really elevated his game in his sophomore season. This guy's been terrific. We'll show you some numbers later on, but he may be the most improved player on this Alabama team. You always love seeing this. Ronnie Henderson, 6'4", jump center for LSU. That's the kind of leaper he is. He's got a smile on his face as he faces Antonio McDice, and he almost won that tip. He, sm he was smiling with <laughs> McDice. He looked at him and laughed. <laughs> Here we go. Alabama. Top is orange, guarded by Livingston. LSU straight man-to-man -man defense. McDice wants it inside. Rubachenko's got his hands full with that big center. Inside, Caffey ran out of room, but he got a pass away. Loose ball picked up by Washington and kept alive by the tie. Orange hook pass picked off. Teaser, there's another steal. Larry just talked about it, and he pulls up on the other end. But for him, that is... Career steal, number 262. Moving up that line in the SEC numbers. He's always been known for great anticipation on defense. Once again, the man-to-man -man defense. Livingston out front on orange. And not a very good shooter. This guy is. Washington outside, brick to three. Griffin trying to keep it alive and goes out of bounds. And no one's been able to sit yet because they're waiting for that first basket before they take a seat. And here's Randy Livingston. He'll slow it up and walk it up. Watch again as Marvin Orange picks up Livingston right at midcourt. Good idea. You don't want to get this guy in a position where he can make those assists and hurt you once he gets deep into that lane. The feed inside. Nolly fades and can't get it. Rebound off to McDice. You'll hear that a lot tonight. Rebound by McDice. Cappy wants it. McDice wants it. Two guys are such strong inside front court players. Washington feeds into Caffey. There's the muscle on the team. He stepped on the baseline. They're going to call an offensive foul as he a little hook with the elbow. And Alabama can score with their bench this season, 35 a game. And that's Jamal Faulkner, who doesn't even start, scores over 11. 
really likes the role of coming off the bench, Brad. He's the kind of guy that, uh, although they'd like to start him, he tells the coaches he'd much rather come off the bench because he feels like he can contribute more after he's watched a few minutes of the game. Livingston leaned in and leaned in with a jumper off the glass for the first score of the ball game. I still think Randy Livingston is about 80 to 85 percent. I don't see him with that great breakaway blinding speed that he had before he hurt that knee. Caesar fronting Caffey on the inside. Muscle on muscle down there. Caffey wants it, and Caesar doing a nice job denying him. But Griffin buries a three. Washington almost had the steal. Caesar with an ill-advised pass there. LSU being very patient on offense. Rechenko out on top and work it around to the baseline to Caesar. Henderson actually trying to post up Orange down low. Here is Henderson, great score, top score in the conference. An LSU team that averages 87 points a game, kind of unusual to see them uh, with a little pattern half-court game. Five seconds on the shot clock. Livingston can't get that one. McDyess the rebound. You think that's by design, Larry? Yeah, it down yeah I do. I don't think they want to run with Alabama up and down the floor. Even though Alabama's only averaging 79 points a game, they are terrific at running, and uh, Dale Brown realizing that doesn't want to get into a running match with them. Livingston with a steal in front of Caffey. And he'll pull up and wait for his troops. Henderson in particular. Nice pass. Caesar underneath. Rubchenko with a tip in. Two good plays there. The terrific pass inside. Henderson delivering it to Caesar, and then a the good follow-up by Rubchenko. 4-3 LSU. It's unusual to see these two clubs in a half-court game. They love to run up and down. Mm -hmm. That's the type of athletes who really lend themselves to an up-and-down game. Well, you don't need to worry about anything if you can fill it like that. Griffin's buried two trays, and Alabama's got his first lead. Hardy says, I like this half-court game, the slow-down game. He only had eight threes coming into this one, and two already tonight. Outside, Nolly for three with the answer. Well, there's a guy that's really come on. Landers Nolly, a junior college transfer from Hiawassee, Tennessee. Hiawassee Junior College. Well, LSU sneaks back in front with four minutes into the game. Seven, six, Tigers. Griffin thought about another one. Henderson better get on it. Leaves him open from 15, and the two-pointer rattles up. Underneath, though, is Washington. There's the surprise player we were talking about. Eric Washington has come on so strong. His number, 17 points a game. Almost a give and go there. Nolly and Rubchenko. Right, look how spread the LSU offense is. They've really got them all over the floor. They sure do. It's three guys that are 30 feet away from the basket. This guy can shoot about 30 feet away from the basket, so you got to watch him. And again, they work it down. Seven on the shot clock. Tried to slide Caesar through on a cut. Knocked away. Six seconds on the shot clock. 15-18 on the game clock. First half with LSU trailing Alabama by one. Leave it to Delta to design a stylish and practical. For LSU, Nolly, who just hit this three-pointer on the left baseline. This is his ninth straight three-pointer. His last nine made field goals, all from outside the arc. Three against Texas, five against Auburn, and one tonight. Brad, it's interesting. He is also tied with Eric Washington of Alabama for second in the SEC in three-point field goal percentage, or at least he was until that one. Mm -hmm. And Artie Griffin's got a pair already for Alabama. LSU by two. So more threes tonight than you saw last yeah, night. Just huh? about. Yeah. <laughs> Washington, he'll try one. Livingston the rebound. Watch the handle. Watch the decision. Easy to Caesar. Caesar had it blocked by McDice. And that's something we'll say a few times tonight as well. McDice fourth in the conference in block shots since 28th of the year. This Alabama team is number one in blocks in the Southeastern Conference. McDice at number four, but Rogers off the bench for Alabama is third. They average about what, seven a game? Something like that? Almost eight. McDice wants it inside against Caesar. Caffey trying to get it to him. Nice feed by Caffey. McDice ties it. Chance to take it in front. Brad, when you're playing against a center like Antonio McDice, he's 6'9", he's 220, and he's very active. Watch Caesar try to front him. But watch Caffey with a good little drop-down pass. you got to have some help on Antonio McDice, and nobody was there to help Caesar. They buried him. 
And the foul was on Henderson. And McDyess trying to cap off his three-point play. It's Alabama back in front by a point. Half-court trap now by Alabama. I think they see that LSU walking that ball up the floor. And they're going to get a steal. Got a jump ball. Jump ball, possession error goes back to LSU. You know what? That's a good idea on the part of David Hobbs to go ahead and put a half-court trap on out there when he sees LSU just meandering up the floor with a basketball. Here's the third-year head coach for the University of Alabama replacing Wimp Sanderson. 20 and 10 last year. Second to Arkansas. See. Henderson in the corner. Look at McDice. He got up. You said we'd say his name with a rebound a lot tonight. Orange on the other end. Can't get it. Chico pulls it off. And Livingston going to try to push it this time. Livingston never does anything fancy with his assist. He just simply delivers the ball when it needs to be made to the man when he's open. Look right there. What a great feed underneath. Blocked by McDyess. Henderson got it back. Fades on the jumper. How about that in your face? How about those three plays? <laughs> Livingston with a pass and a great move inside by Henderson to get the ball back after McDyess blocked it. Nice block, didn't very often, not very often do you see a player grab that ball and just fade away as if to say, hey, try to stop this one. Nice once again against Rubachenko. Kathy lost it going up, but Caesar helped him lose it. Rubachenko's got an interesting uh, something around his upper arm right there on his left side. It looks like a knee pad. I think it is a knee pad on his upper arm. You can see the wrapping right there. He's ready for a football game. Probably could play a little football. I think so. Jason Caffey steps up. Had the foot injury in late October. Broken bone on his foot. His first start back against TCU. And what a start back. It was 25 points in a career high in rebounds. Lane violation. Not a great start at the free throw line for Alabama. A miss and then a violation on the second shot, so Cavie doesn't get a chance to get either one of them. Here comes the main bench man. Faulkner will check in for Alabama, and Washington will sit. How about that? You take a guy out who's your leading scorer, put him on the bench, and bring a guy off the bench. Does it all over 11. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. All that a straight man to man. Caesar trying to screen for Livingston. Livingston got it back to Caesar. All these guys from LSU are not afraid to put it up from three-point land. That one misses, and Kathy pulls it off. Walker not afraid to come off the bench firing. Fired an air ball there. That Anderson. was a misfire. That was a blank. Anderson and Livingston. You hear those names. You'd like, to, you'd like to hear them three more years together. You can't guarantee that. Mm, I don't think so. LSU turnover prone has been part of their problem this year against Texas. 32 turnovers, and they were still in that game. They can't get costly with a basketball against this club. It's like Faulkner on the back right there. With Chinko trying to get up and get the rebound, and Faulkner climbing right up the frame. Pavlich comes in for LSU. And Rubchenko sits down. Well, that is some haircut in the top you got. I like that. That'd look good on you. You don't have to get up in the morning and do anything with nope. it, do you? Huh? Mm -hmm. No curlers, no nothing head, like that? No head and shoulders there, babe. Yeah. Parker may be bleeding a little bit as he goes to the back. And Roy Rogers comes in. Goggles and all. Alabama second in the country against the field goal shooting of the opposition. That has been their strong suit, forcing turnovers and forcing bad shots. And they're good at that. This is a good defensive club. I'm talking about the tie. They really get after it. Caesar in low. Rodgers made him adjust his shot a little bit and then cleared the glass. Washington feeds it down low. McDice on the baseline. Mikovic got a piece of it. Rodgers with a reverse layup. Nobody can find a hand. Still Alabama ball with a fresh 35 and 12 or 4 left in the half. They've been stuck on 12 to 11 Alabama for quite some time. 
Well, you got two pretty good defensive clubs right here, and they both got inside players that can block shots. Obviously, for Alabama, we've already talked about their two big guys, the Rodgers and McDyess, but Kutovic and Caesar are also excellent blocking shots in there, too. McDyess double team still got a shot away on the baseline. Rodgers battle for the rebound. Livingston stole it from him. And gets it ahead to Nolly on the run. Right, you know the one thing I like about Randy Livingston? Watch when he gets the basketball. He immediately goes to the middle of the floor. So he's got two options. And he's got two options. That's a heads-up play, smart on his part, get to the center, and have left and right to play with. LSU by three. Dale Brown says this young man has got great basketball sense. Orange outside, thought about a three. And now we'll take it. Livingston had a hold of it. And had it knocked away, but it'll be LSU ball. 11 minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the first half. Randy Livingston passing as only Randy Livingston can for an easy two. It's LSU by three. Introducing Ford Contour. Gold, a world car for the 21st century. Example. World-class technology in two entirely new engines. The 16-valve ZTEC that can deliver up to 35 miles per gallon highway and 125 horsepower. Plus, the 24-valve V6 Duratec that travels 100,000 miles between recommended tune-ups. The totally new Ford Contour. Well-equipped for just $14,655. There's something you're going to love at Pizza Hut even before you take your first bite. Our guarantee. If your pizza isn't right, it's free. You'll probably never need it, but it's nice to know it's there. Love the stuff we're made of Pizza Hut. There's one expense most hotels can't eliminate. Handouts. Something for you, something for you, and... Oops, sorry. I take plastic. Avoid handouts. Hit the roof. Red Roof ends. Call 1-800-THE-ROOF. Look, it's a gold card. Sure, no card on the planet is more useful, but it can't grant you inner peace. Well, I don't know. I mean, you could use it to go someplace where your only action would be one of non-action, which is pretty peaceful. And if you let Master Guest arrange your vacation, you'd save 20 to 40 percent, plus another 100 bucks if you book by April 30th. And saving money might be the path of true wisdom. So I guess a gold MasterCard could help you see the light. Just remember to wear your sunscreen. Gold MasterCard, it's more than a gold card. It's smart money. Look for your gold MasterCard application and apply. We're going to do something tonight that we haven't done all year long. We're going to walk the ball up on makes. Now, they have not pressed just a couple minutes in games. So we're going to walk it up on made free throws and made field goals, and we're going to try to conserve some energy there. And then three, as intelligently as we can without hurting us, we're going to try to rotate eight people, and hopefully that'll work. Dale Brown on the game plan tonight. One and two, obviously. We're walking it up after makes and free throws. And then three, conserve some energy by rotating eight guys. Well, Brad, I think it's important on his part because Alabama uses ten players who are averaging ten-plus minutes, and you mm -hmm. can get worn down when you get that many bodies coming at you. Latavitz underneath. Missed it, but got his own board. Missed it again. And Rubchenko, they're going to call him for an elbow? I think so. Pretty good effort on the inside by Eric Washington. That 6'3 sophomore out of Jackson, Mississippi, at one of the great high school programs in the state over there at Pearl High School. Up in there working those boards. His forte is really a scoring, though. He's come on so strong this year from a guy who just uh, had limited playing time last year. Three and a half points a game last year, almost 17. Average this season. We approach the midway point of the first half with LSU up by three. Washington, nice fake, gave up a three for a 15-footer. Anderson the rebound. Washington struggling with his shooting tonight for Alabama. Lutchenko on the baseline. And that one was partially blocked by Faulkner, so it goes out of bounds to LSU. That time, LSU did not walk, walk the ball up. They got it up very quickly and got it in the corner. Rubchenko had a pretty good shot, and Faulkner got there. So maybe LSU has changed their mind on that offense and decided not to go just half court. Henderson has not had very many good square looks at the hoop. He had that one fadeaway jumper after McDyce had blocked his shot. That's his only score so far. Artie Griffin doing a pretty good job so far on Ronnie Henderson. Well, there he'll take it outside, though. 
And Tomdich keeps it alive. Right back to him goes Livingston. Good move by the big fella, and that time it paid off for him. You think Mutabich was uh, intimidated by Roy Rogers? Forget it. He says, I'm going to go right up over you. Number three shot blocker in the SEC. 6'10", 260. With that haircut, I think I'd back in on anybody I know, too. He could certainly have my position. <laughs> Here's Griffin. He's already got two out there. Missed that one. LSU ball with a five-point lead. Alabama struggling from the field right now. And Caesar will come back in as Dale Brown said, going to try to rotate seven or eight guys. Keep them fresh. Smart move on his part, I think, because Alabama continues to rotate people, too. Pretty tough to play in today's college game, the way they play up and down the floor. Play 35, 38 minutes. The top, he just flat through that one away. And a big pile up. Orange is going to be called for the charging foul. Randy Livingston in great position to draw that player control foul. Orange went up in the air, and Livingston was right there to take it in the chest. Cannot say enough good things about this young man. Henderson kind of bailing out as Orange goes in. Look at that position. He was right there to yep. take it. Had his feet square. And down he went to draw the charge. Garrick Scott with the set to check in for LSU and does. Matovich will go out. Alabama, as we said, struggling from the field. Coming in, they were shooting over 48% as a club, only 22% tonight. LSU not that much better, but they've got the lead by five. Livingston off the dribble. And Alabama trying to keep it alive. Faulkner loses it out of bounds again. McDice and Mutavich will come in. That's very good. Little roll right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch the box set up by LSU. Good screen. Nolly wants it. They've gotten to him. That one three, I think, got enough of him. They didn't want to see any more of those in the corner. I want to see how many of those he can hit in a row before he makes a two pointer. Henderson now handling the basketball instead of Livingston. Look how spread LSU's offense is. The big guy squares up again and got the roll. Mutavich again, strong move. A little further out, 10, 12 feet away from the basket. Four for Mishu Mutavich off the bench. It's a seven point. LSU lead. Nice drive. Mutavich challenged and picked up the foul. Happy, strong to the basket. What happened there was Caesar was not prepared for this move by Caffey. I thought he thought he was going to go up. Not even a fake. Caesar not reacting quickly enough. And look at Caffey get there. Utavich with a quick foul to prevent the layup. And Caffey back to the line to attempt two more free throws. And Jason missed his first two. Big jump in his rebounding and his points ever since he came back. Not starting their first five games, but his last seven he started. He has really raised those numbers really helped their rebounding as a team. Him, obviously, as an individual, but you can see what he's done as a starter. Why you want him in there. His free throw shooting could use a little work, though. One out of four for the strike. Cuts the lead to six. 18-12, Tigers. Nolly, that's a two-pointer, but he missed it anyway. Dale Brown was telling me today when I was visiting with him, he said, Mutavich does have a propensity to create a lot of fouls. And he says, I try to keep him out of foul trouble. We discuss it. But he said he's such an aggressive player. He goes out and gives it everything he's got. It's very difficult for him to pull back. He says he does have problems with this young man fouling. Got a couple now with 8.35 left first half. Can you imagine Dale Brown telling somebody he's too emotional? <laughs> Dice. Caesar clears it to Livingston. Three on two for LSU. Livingston's going to pull up and take a three himself. McDice, great rebound. One hand off balance and still a mile high. And Bethel trying to push it. Livingston stripped him. And now it's Passick, who gave up one shot, took the other. And a foul on Caesar before the shot. Caesar wanted to argue that a little bit. Dale Brown immediately got up, said, calm down, and then Ronnie Henderson came over and gave him a slap in the shoulder as if to say, we don't need a technical on top of it. Yeah, you know, Dale Brown, smart play now, gets Caesar out of the game, sits him down, a little confab, a little discussion. 
dean of SEC coaches. His 23rd year in Baton Rouge. Faulkner on the fade. Pretty nice move. Good turnaround. He's got three inches on Henderson and used every inch of it there on that turnaround, Jay. His first points, and it cuts the Tiger lead to four. Watch again how LSU spreads the court. Try to take advantage of getting the ball inside. And Ronnie Henderson getting a little frustrated that he's not getting the ball, and he didn't think that he was guilty of that foul as he came around to pick and pushed off passing. So Henderson's got his second foul. Two points to go with his two fouls. And he's going to have to come out. So they're going to walk down and shoot free throws. As LSU's already over the limit. And Brian Passick, 6'3 junior out of Savannah, Georgia, will go to the free throw line. You think if Caesar had been in the game during that time, he'd have walked over to Anderson and said, now calm down. I was just thinking of that. <laughs> this guy doesn't miss. Not missed a yeah. throw this year. 12 for 12. Fair to say that, this, this deep into January, somebody who has not missed a free throw. Still perfect. And he cuts the LSU lead to two points. 18-16 Tigers with 7.44 to go in the half. The Showboat's on Alulu. Sunday at 8, only on ESPN. St. John's with a furious run at the end, but Syracuse holds them off, making their free throws 91 to 87. Lawrence Moton with 21. Rod and Larry. Thanks, John. Felipe Lopez, just an average night, huh? 35 for freshman. <laughs> Here it's 18-16. The lead swelled to seven points for LSU, and now Alabama passing for those free throws has closed the gap. Tomorrow night, Pitt and Villanova get things underway for us at 7 o'clock as the Pitt Panthers go visiting Kerry Kittles and the Wildcats in at 9. Number 3, North Carolina, putting a 12-1 record on the line against 18th-ranked Virginia in ACC play all tomorrow night right here on ESPN. How about that comeback by Virginia down in Durham Not against bad. Duke the other night, huh? Yeah. Ooh, what a strong comeback. A Virginia team that I think is getting, him, getting much better almost with every game. Seems to have been their pattern the last couple of years. Tomlich all alone, putting a move on McDice. Thought he was going to put too many moves on and walk with it, but he did draw a foul. You know, Brad, I was talking with David Hobbs today as we take a look at Mutovic in this move right here. We had an interesting comment about something today to me as we saw McDyess try to go up and attempt to block that shot. He said, yo, there, there are some positive negative things about blocking shots. Yeah, you get the shot blocked, but he said it's usually not the guy who's guarding the man who's shooting. It's usually somebody who's helping. And he says, when that happens, if the shot goes up, a guy has a chance to get an offensive rebound. A lot of teams get offensive rebound buzz because a guy who goes to help maybe gets to the block shot mm -hmm. but doesn't make it, and it leaves the other guy open. He says, so there are some pluses and minuses to getting right. blocked shots. He says, psychologically, it's good to have the thought of what, every time you go in there, you got a chance of it coming back at you. Good point. Mutovic has scored six, and he leads LSU in the scoreboard. Four-point Tiger lead, 7-20 left first half from Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Top spot in the SEC West on the line here in early conference play. Brad Nessler and Larry Conley with you on Super Tuesday. They want they got a real battle going on in this SEC West, too. There are four solid clubs here. Bethel. Tough shot baseline, threw up an air ball, but Caffey's there to catch it. Matavich, strong board. Two best rebounding teams in the SEC, Brad. As many shots as they're missing tonight, they got a lot of them to get. The shots are not falling, but the pace is picking up. Caffey, that's his spot. Nope. Henderson, that nice position in the rebound. Boy, really gets up. We talked about the fact that he jumped center at the beginning of the game at 6-4, and you saw it there, the elevation going up for the rebound. This LSU team is the number one team in the SEC in rebounding. In fact, they're eighth in the nation in rebound margin. So a club that really works the glass, and everybody contributes. It's just not the big guys. I mean, they all get in there and get rebounds. Henderson averages six rebounds a game. There he is. Still only two points. That is very un-Henderson-like. Ruchenko's their leader with seven. The 
Livingston wanted to get a backdoor cut to Henderson and they ended up throwing it away. Those two trying to get on the same page and Livingston just looked over to Dale Brown, pointed at himself as if to say, Coach, that one's my fault. You know, he, he averages five turnovers a game, which is high for a point guard, but he delivers 11 assists. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's better than two-to-one ratio, which is what you'd like to have with any point guard. And you wonder how many of those five turnovers were good passes that were maybe a little too good for the guy they were intended for. That happens quite a bit, too. There's a turnover by Caffey. Uh, Rubchenko with a nice defensive play right there. He had Caffey pinned right on the sideline and just bounced it off his foot. Rubchenko, a good player. Young man has come in here and really given this LSU team a big lift this year. He's another one of those surprise players. Approaching the six-minute mark. There's Rubchenko for three. Rebound comes off to Eric Washington. And Bethel will push it. Lobs, Caffey. Missed the jam. That would have been a great looking play. Nice thought, just couldn't finish it. Orange and Griffin come back in. Well, need a club lighting the scoreboard up with shots. Here's one that should have gone down. Caffey just got a little bad angle right there as the pass more in front of the rim, and he was more to the side of it. Goes back to LSU. Once again, watch Livingston out top. Orange trying to shut him down. Good fight through the screen that time by Washington. Now he comes right back to set a pick for Livingston. Here's been the guy for LSU, and he is again. Misha Mutavich has got eight. And he has taken it to McDice tonight. No fear there. Washington chuck shot baseline. You see the Alabama players with great elevation going up for the rebound, and McDice does work himself back in for the board, and Mutavich picked up his third foul, and that one really stings. Boy, did Antonio McDice make a great defensive play here. This is all hustle. The two big guys battling to the sideline. He just came up with a basketball, and now Dale Brown's going to have to substitute for him. Look at McDice come from behind right here to steal this basketball. Then Mutavich just simply reaches out, hooks him with the right arm and the right leg. So he's going to have to sit the rest of the half, which has 5-10 remaining, and Derek Scott has come in to take his spot. McDice, a 6'9 sophomore, at the free throw line. Free throw shooting has been a weak spot for Alabama tonight. Livingston all the way and kicks it out to Nolik. Nice penetration by Livingston, but decided not to take the shot himself. LSU threw it away. Brad, that's a tough pass to make right there because as he turned to go to the basket, there were two defenders between he and the man who was throwing the ball, and Rubchenko really had no chance to grab that one. Alabama down six. Their only lead in the ball game was when they were up six to four. Nice feed to McDice down low. And there was no doubt about that foul. Scott got his money's worth. Did he ever? Got all 267 pounds into that one. Antonio McDice is really very active around the basket. Watch again as Jason Caffey with a little high-low post action right there. You can see Scott with a little push in the back. In fact, he followed it up with a, a little more affirmative action. Mm -hmm. A little push. <laughs> we won't give him two fouls. We'll just give him one. It's the PC thing to do. And I think the officials, I think Don Rutledge just said to the Alabama players in particular, if you don't keep your shirts in your trunks, you're going to sit. And so McDice is busy strapping the shirt inside the pants. There's a whole lot of shirt to tuck there. <laughs> it is. And a whole lot of pants to put them in. And Clarence Caesar has done likewise. Just a little haberdashery work out there, mm -hmm. that's all. A little measuring. Caffey. Nice cut to the lane to pick up the rebound. Alabama can cut it to three if they score. See the clock, 425 left first half. Good switch that time. Livingston picking up Orange. Griffin had a hot hand from three-point range earlier. Now he drives for two. Well, he had two threes and that nice little drive to the hoop. And Alabama's back within three the four-minute mark. LSU 22, Alabama 19. And here comes the crowd all of a sudden. They have not had much to scream about so far. 
Livingston, tough shot, off glass. He loves that glass. He uses that glass. Remember an old Celtics guard by the name of Casey Jones? You Sam Jones? Mm -hmm. Sam Jones was as good as there was at using that glass, and Livingston uses it the same way. And a hook and a foul by Garrick Scott. What's this move right here? Good spin move. He's got an orange hook. Now look at this nice soft touch off of the window. Oh, that's pretty. That is so pretty. Livingston with four. McDice goes back to the free throw line. He has four on the right. Leading scorer right now is Artie Griffin with eight points for Alabama. Dice three out of five from the free throw line. A wooden award candidate coming into the season. Hey, Brad, this is an LSU team that had won at Auburn last week, and uh, it was their first win in nearly a year on the road. Had a disappointing year last year, one of the two times that Dale Brown's not been able to take a club to the postseason, and they're playing much better right now. And they still have the lead, but it's been cut to three with 3.45 to go in the half. Nestler and Larry Conley and our friends spelling Roy for Roy Rogers. Alabama trails by three with 3.45 left in the first half. Not a very good shooting half for these teams. Here's something unusual. You would think Alabama would be the, the club that's having more points in the paint, but it's actually LSU. Our man Misha Matovic is on the bench with three personals. Leading scorer for LSU with eight. They're really doubling up Henderson, and he threw it away. Griffin, nice look to Caffey. The follow by McDice. Good transition by Alabama that time. Good follow by McDice. There's the trap, half court. Livingston feeds Caesar, and Scott had it blocked by McDice. Loose ball. LSU will have it. Boy, Antonio McDice, watch him follow the shot. Caffey up strong, can't get it, but look at the follow. That's a big-time follow. Now, that's the offensive end. Watch the defensive end. Forget it. You're not going to get it up there. Scott gets it rejected. LSU takes a 20-second timeout. David Hobbs rallies is tied around him as they have cut this LSU lead to one. Well, next Super Tuesday, here's how we get things going. Michigan and Indiana will square off at 7.30 Eastern. And then at 9.30, you'll get another look at the high-flying tide of Alabama. They'll travel Arkansas to take on the defending champs, Alabama and Arkansas, following Michigan and Indiana all next Tuesday on ESPN. Jason Cavey without a field goal so far in this ballgame. But the last miss, McDice helped him out with in a hurry. We're down to three. Ten to go first half. And it's a one-point game. Livingston for three. Rebound, Caffey. <laughs> Alabama can take the lead for the first time since way back when it was six to four. Watch Griffin work. He's got Henderson spinning. Henderson picks up his third foul. Now LSU's got some foul trouble. Watch again as Griffin makes a nice spin move. A little fake here. Turn around, crossover. You see Henderson reach out and grab him as he makes his move. Artie Griffin's been the star, I think, for Alabama in this first half. We've and talked a lot about the other players, but he's the guy that's really carried the load. And now two of LSU stars are going to have to sit as Ronnie Henderson's got to come out for a remaining 254 of the half. Quentin Thomas will take his spot. Henderson with three, Mutavich with three. Eric Scott has two. That's the foul situation for LSU. Alabama has no foul trouble. That was not pretty. No. Played at South Plains Junior College before coming to Alabama. Leads the club in steals and is already over his average tonight here in just the first half. Nine for Audie Griffin. Good adjustment that time. Got into the front of the rim and rolled it over. First tie of the ball game. And Quentin Thomas, who just checked in, just had the ball check out. Well, Dale Brown was upset. He just stomped the floor about three feet from where we're sitting. I, <laughs> I felt the gonna, tremor. I thought he was going to spill your water over there. <laughs> we're tied at 24. 
Griffin. Nice drive to the hoop. Thomas comes back with a nice defensive play of his own. So he lost one, but he got one back. Well, that was a terrific effort for Thomas to come back and get that ball. Lonzo Johnson waiting to check in for LSU. Livingston might have to take up some scoring slack now with Henderson on the bench trying to feed Caesar and had it knocked away. And here comes Alonzo Johnson. It's an interesting uh, turn of events here to put Johnson, a 6'11 player, in for Thomas, who registers about 6'2, so they've gone with a bigger lineup here. Livingston at 6'4 is the smallest player on the floor for LSU. He was trying to work for a shot, had it stripped away, got it back with a left hand, went up, and McDice a mile in the air for another rebound. Washington, short, Ochenko clears it off to Livingston. Ooh, that pass was dangerous. It did help draw a foul, however. That one, I don't think Randy Livingston would throw again if he knew what the outcome would be, even though there was a foul call on Alabama. The pass didn't have enough on it. Well, I thought the pass was a little premature. You know, a little more pressure down the floor, get into dribble penetration, then make the pass a little later. Alabama's still not over the limit of fouls. We're under two minutes first half, so LSU's not going to go to the free throw line, maybe unless they're fouled in the act. Caesar, Johnson down low, double dribble or walk? He walked with it. LSU having turnover problems now. They're giving the ball back to Alabama. Alabama so far has not been able to capitalize on it. LSU's gone almost two minutes without a field goal. Washington goes to the bench and Brian Passick in for him. Passick a good shooter. Oh, we've been three stuck, point shooter. We've been stuck on 24 for a while too. Yes, we have. Oh, nice hands by Livingston that almost knocked it away from Warren. Caffey wants it inside against Johnson. Johnson doing a nice job of floating him. Here's Griffin open for three. He hit his first two. He's missed his last two from out there. Passing, he'll try one. Got it. A three. Passing nails a three. And McDyess got the big rebound and got it to him. We told you Passing could shoot the tray, and he's just given Alabama its largest lead. 109 left in the half. 27-24 tie. An 8-0 Alabama run. Lutchenko, he'll try a three. Happy with a rebound. They've got McDice out in front if they can track him down. They'll wait, and now Orange will take a three and got it. Once down seven, now up six. LSU will spread it out, maybe play for the last shot. There's about a three-second difference on the shot clock and the game clock. That is the game clock in the corner of your screen. Livingston with ball in hand and 10 on the shot clock. Orange doing a nice job defensively. Livingston drew a foul. And Marvin Orange got him to pick up his second. We're 8.9 seconds away from the Delta Fawcett halftime report. John Saunders and Clark Kellogg will talk about Syracuse struggle, a big five showdown, and a battle in Atlanta between Wake Forest and Georgia Tech. All that, all the scores, and a lot more, about nine seconds away. So, as we said, LSU may not go to the free throw line unless fouled in the act, and that is the case with Livingston, although that was a 17 foul anyway against Alabama, finally. But if you go a whole half without picking up that seventh foul, that's pretty good. We're going to have a 20 second timeout that Alabama will take with 8.9 seconds remaining here in the first half. 30 to 24. LSU led at one point, 18 to 11. Alabama battled back, got themselves tied with the Tigers at 24, and then it was Passink who buries a three. And then Marvin Orange did likewise. Back-to-back -back three pointers by Alabama, and an 11-0 run in the last three minutes and 47 seconds has given them a six-point lead. Crimson Tide, 29 and four the last two years at home, as we said to start the ball game tonight. 20 straight home victories, only two shy of the school record. And Randy Livingston will step up, a 70% free throw shooter. 
First trip to the free throw line for him. He's been held in check tonight. There's his numbers on the year, leading the SEC and the country in assists. Free throw rattles out. In the last five minutes, the wheels haven't come off for LSU, but there might be at least one tire that's going a little bit flat here. Livingston with five. Alabama will have one shot before the break. They're up by five. Griffin will try to do it himself on the baseline. Rebound Caesar. So no further damage done. At halftime, though, 30 to 25. Alabama comes from behind to lead by five at intermission. And let's go to Larry Conley, courtside with Dale Brown. Larry. Well, Dale, it was a tough first half. Your guys kept them under containment for about the first 18 minutes and then went down the last two. Well, we lost uh, uh, two guys, Mutovic and Henderson, with three fouls each, and we lost our momentum. And it's been a great defensive game. They've done a better job on the boards than we do. We have to block them out. This isn't the kind of team you can just go to the boards. They're such great leapers. But I think had Henderson and Misha not gotten in foul trouble, I think we would have had a chance to extend this lead. But a great defensive game, not much offense up to now. Great, Dale. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks, stopping sir. by. John Saunders, looks like we've got a terrific basketball game in the making, and the front court of Alabama started to come on right at the end. Absolutely, Larry. An 11-1 run to end the half, but the game plan was to walk the ball, right. bring it up slowly, and slow them down a bit. How did it work? I thought it worked well in the first 12 minutes. Then the foul problems came into play. And also, when you slow the game down, you need to dribble, penetrate, draw fouls, and then you also need to make your opportunity right. jump shots. LSU didn't do that, so the slowdown game kind of backfired in the last part of the first half. Yeah, it doesn't help to slow it down if you miss the shots <laughs> after right. that. You're the only one who's running slow at that point. LSU and Alabama, the second half is coming up, and welcome to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. When we come back, we'll have a look at scores and highlights from from elsewhere, including the Big East, Michael Lloyd in and Stanford and Cal, the Cardinal backcourt, Deion Cross, 18 points a game, Revan Knight, six assists a game. And still to come, the second half from the SEC, Antonio McDice with eight, they lead. Some things are worth the price. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, brought to you by Acura. Some things are worth the price. Back to the game in a moment, updating this one. Wake Forest trailing Georgia Tech 55 to 48. Sweet D, Tim Duncan on his way to another double-double, 15 and 9. Only five minutes to go in that one. Drew Barry has 18. We'll keep you updated. Brad and Larry, back to you. All right, guys, thank you. Halftime. In Tuscaloosa with a tied leading Tigers of LSU 30 to 25. Brad Nessler and Larry Conley with you at Coleman Coliseum. And LSU, the last four minutes, they went without a field goal. Dale Brown came out early. He was squinting at the statistics at halftime just as we were, I think, Larry. Why, well, Brad, he was really right. Butovich and Henderson on the bench with those three fouls were key. Let's go back and look at the first half highlights right here for Alabama. You're going to see the turn by Griffin and a good screen by McDice. He gets the basket off of the screen by McDice. Watch McDice do the work on the inside. You saw that screen he can also do it on the other end once he gets the rebound the kick out the passing he's the guy in the front court for Alabama that really did most of the work in the last couple of minutes the rebounding the good kick out pass and it really gave Alabama that five-point lead McDice with eight of those 22 Alabama rebounds you see poor shooting by both clubs and the points in the paint LSU with a slight edge and they did well with Matavich in there he led LSU in scoring in the first half, but it's Washington who comes out firing for three. What a way to start for Alabama to begin the second half. LSU out-rebounded Alabama 26 to 25 in that first half. Big dies with eight. Nice backdoor cut by Henderson, drew a foul, and the second half starts briskly. Foul will be on Marvin Orange. I take that back, Artie Griffin. <laughs> So Ronnie Henderson will step up to the free throw line. They've got to find a way to loosen up Ronnie Henderson and get him free around some picks because two points in the first half for a guy that's leading the SEC in scoring. They need more. 
really it was the LSU uh, backcourt not performing. Six out of 17, 35%. The front court for Bama was three of 14. And the only guy that really did any damage at all was McDyson on the inside. So the two, what we thought were the two strong factions coming into the game for these respective teams did not get it done in the first half. I guess credit some of that to the defense of the opposition. LSU comes up with a loose ball, still loose, and Caesar will pick it up. Livingston, he still has a little bit of a limp in his gait, as you said, Larry. I don't think he's near 100%, but if he is 80%, he's better than a lot of guards, obviously, around the country. Well, uh, most people, when he came out his year of high school, uh, that senior year, pretty much uh, gave him the award as the, as the uh, high school player of the year, his senior year. Most of, by most accounts, most people who were the experts in that area said he was the best. And uh, then to have that knee injury to have to sit out last year was devastating for him. Over 3,000 high school points. Here's a guy that can pick up points in a hurry if you get him on a tear. He's too strong off the glass, but he kept it alive. Livingston trying to go to Rubchenko, and Caffey stole it. And then to add to the problems, Rubchenko picks up the foul. Well, Randy Livingston had a chance to go either way with this pass. He could have gone right or gone left with it. He went to the left, and uh, he'll get another turnover as a result. Rubchenko will pick up a foul on the errant pass. 33-27. Alabama by six. Second half just underway. Faulkner looking to Caffey inside. They'd like to work it inside. They go to Orange for three instead. All of a sudden, the outside game begins to pick up for Alabama. Orange only has two field goals at both trays, though. And it is a nine-point Alabama advantage. Henderson, he'll try a three. Caesar. Partially blocked, it's still in here. Yeah, these guys are goal. These guys are so good on the backboard, both teams. Nice scoop underneath off the glass, Artie Griffin. Excellent drive, and he has 11. Yeah, we talked a lot about the front court of Alabama, but I think it's been Griffin's play in the backcourt that's really been the star so far tonight. I agree with you. And McDyce has worked on the inside. Eight points and eight rebounds at halftime on his way to another double-double. Faulkner picks up the foul as Nolly is trying to work for a shot. That's three on Faulkner. Is that three fouls on Faulkner? Mm -hmm. Just two minutes into the second half, so Alabama has its first foul problem. Jamal Faulkner. They got a lot more players to play with than LSU has. They do. I mean, Henderson and Mutovich with those fouls. Mutovich off of the bench, getting ready to come back in. Now they got his man up. Walker almost fouled him again, and now they got the shooter's roll. Ten for Landers Nolly. It's a like that name. It's a, it's a, name. It's a good Land, Landers Nolly. Rolls off the top. It's a lot easier than Misha Mutovich, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Misha's set to check back in right in front of us. And Rubchenko will come out. I feel like I'm doing an Olympic game. This is really the UN. <laughs> Rubchenko, as a matter of fact, is majoring in international trade and finance. Happy down low, got away from Caesar. I think he walked. Yep, he did. Ted Hillary made a good call right there. Uh, Caffey shuffled his feet as he made that baseline move to get inside. So LSU will walk it up as Dale Brown said they would to try to conserve some energy. They trail by seven. Ronnie Henderson is yet to get loose. Credit the job that Griffin's doing on him defensively. And LSU loses it out of bounds. Right, I'll tell you what made that play. Artie Griffin doing that double team. He left Henderson and went to the corner to double up on Mutovic. And when he did, Mutovic made a bad pass. And Alabama gets the ball back. Good defensive play. Griffin's doing it on both ends. That's Faulkner's spot. Is it ever? He's made a ton of them from there in the last two years. Ten point Alabama lead. Livingston behind the back with a drive. Sweet move. Was that sweet? Oh. Tell you what, he soured orange on that one. <laughs> Faulkner rattled one off. Nolly the rebound. Top, top, top. Nice hook. 
Caesar with a foul. Well, that was a tough tip. Bad, tough angle to get it in. He actually got it off the glass. Yeah, you start tipping them in off the glass, and you've gotten up in the air pretty well. Almost four minutes into the second half. Six-point ball game. Griffin around a pick. He thought about another three. Now drives on Nolly and works for that one. LSU with a board and Caesar. Livingston underneath, all alone is Henderson. Good work. LSU starting to make a little bit of a comeback now. Six straight points for LSU. Once down by ten, they've cut it to four. David Hobbs upset with his club on the inside. Roy Rogers getting set to come in. LSU, not a great deal of pressure on the ball. Not denying the passes to the wings. They just shut it down when it gets into the middle. Lob by Griffin underneath the Caffey. Caffey had it blocked by Caesar, but Caesar got body as well as ball. Brad, one of the things Alabama's having success with tonight is that high-low post pass. They're making the good lob inside, and it's either going to Caffey or it's going to McDyess. I think they ought to go back to the well a few more times. I think that one's working pretty well for them. Mm -hmm. McDyess will sit. Rodgers will check in. Free throw line will be Jason Caffey. Only well, one point tonight. Very seldom do you say that. Averaging 13 a game. Average 13 last year. He's capable of putting up those 25-point nights, but not tonight. He had a 21-point game in the first matchup with LSU last year. I'll tell you what, he came back very, very well from that injury. He was out almost a month. So he got back, uh, started working out on November the 28th. Didn't show uh, any indication that puts bothering him at all. Caffey, both free throws. And that gives Alabama a six-point lead. But LSU's made a nice little run thanks to Randy Livingston and company. With 15-16 left in the ballgame. The money? Just tell them to wait. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Six-point Alabama lead, 15-16 to play in the ballgame. Randy Livingston came in leading the country at assists. You see 11 a game. And look at what some of the other greats in the college game have done in their freshman year. That's some pretty good company, and he is way above what uh, some of them have done in their illustrious college careers. Tonight he's had some good passes. He's had some turnovers, too. Only had two assists in the first half, so Alabama's pretty well Caesar, nice feed, Matavich underneath, good adjustment. You know, Alabama went to his own defense that time. LSU with good recognition and good ball movement. I agree with what Dale Brown told you, heading to the locker room completely at halftime. Had it not been for Henderson and Matavich picking up their third fouls, it might have been a different look at the end of that first half. But Alabama put together the 11-1 run to end the first half with a five-point lead. Tough shot. And a flyer by Orange, kept alive by Caffey. Alabama with another chance now on a fresh clock. Trying to get themselves set in their half-court game. Watch the top up here. Watch the screen. They'll free Griffin and watch the screen across. Rodgers wants it. There it is. Against Matavich with four fouls. Tried to feed it down low to Faulkner and had it stolen away by Nolly. Nice move. Rubchenko. And wave it off. You know, Rubchenko had pulled up just a little bit. He had a little eight-foot jump shot right off the glass right there. Anderson back in. Rubchenko sits. 14.05 left. Alabama 43. LSU 39. Brad Nessler and Larry Conley with you. Top spot in the SEC West here early in conference play between these two clubs. Alabama 2-1, and one, LSU 2-0 and oh. in the division standing. Faulkner, nice scoop to the baseline. The reverse and the follow by Rodgers. Wave it off. The ball was snuggled right on the front of the rim. 
I mean, Dyes came up, or Rogers. It was Rogers that came up as Faulkner makes the move. Now, watch it just settle right in on the front of the rim. You know what? Also, Mutavnish reached up and got a hold of the net just before he did that, too. Nolly on the feed from Livingston. There's an assist. 43-41. Nolly continues to have a good game for LSU. He's got a dozen. The two guys we didn't talk about much at the top of the show really have risen to the top. Marty Griffin for Alabama and Nolly for LSU. Sometimes when you play great defense against the stars of the opposition, that's what happens. Parker, good cut as he got away underneath. Livingston goes on his own, gives up the pick by Caesar, and the rebound is Cappies. Jason on the offensive end, leaves it underneath. Shot blocked. Faulkner went up and had it rejected. I think Faulkner will have second thoughts about going inside again with a basketball. He's going to go to the bench right now. Washington passing check back in. Caesar not only can steal the ball, he can get some blocks as well. Oh, that one's really going to hurt LSU. Matavich has just picked up his fourth foul. Well, Dale Brown was right today when he told me he really has problems with keeping this young man out of foul trouble. He just picked up his fourth. There's a long, long way to go. And when he's not in there, the complexion of the inside game for LSU changes dramatically. And that really gives a big lift to the Crimson Tide. Jason Caffey without a field goal tonight. All his points from the free throw line, and even that has been a struggle as he is three of seven from the strike. Not a Jason Caffey type of night. I know Brad in the change uh, from the game when he was coming off the bench to when he started those last seven. His, his point per game average did not go up, but his rebounding average skyrocketed. He definitely works a tough floor game, but tonight he's really struggling with a shot. Nolly drew the blocking foul. Washington picks up his third. So now Alabama's got a couple of problems of their own. Faulkner and Washington, three each. Topic sits with four. Hey, who else has had a tough night tonight? Eric Washington, who's this club's leading scorer. Eric will sit down with three personals and only five points. Henderson. You get him hot, you got a whole different game. Ronnie got the three, and the lead's cut to one. I'll tell you what, they are so explosive. All they have to do is get him back in there, and with his lights lit up, he can turn this game around in a big hurry. Sure can. Alabama can continues to look inside. Push. Rubchenko. And if that's on him, that is four. And now, Matavich and Rubchenko, both with four fouls, the two big guys for LSU, in a heap of foul trouble with 12.15 to go. Smart on the part of the tide, I think, to continue to put pressure on this LSU interior defense. Caffey's very quick to the basket. They're looking for him. He wants to get Rubchenko. He knows he's got four. Got a hold. Is that it? Yep. He's gone. Well, they did exactly what you said they should do. With 12.06, there's filing out, and then there's filing out with 12.06 left. And the other big fella has four. I wonder what Dale Brown's going to do right now. I don't know. This yeah, whole, unless Garrick Scott comes in to fill some time. I mean, it's a whole different lineup now. Yeah, this really hurts LSU. He's going to use Alonzo Johnson instead. He's got to have some big player in there because you know that Alabama is going to throw their big people inside. Tough night for Roman Rubchenko. Roman Stanislav Rubchenko. important minutes Johnson plays all year for this LSU team. Passick tried a three around a pick and didn't get it. And now LSU, even though they've got all that foul trouble, has a chance to regain the lead. It's Johnson, Livingston, Caesar, Henderson, and Nolly on the 
the floor for the Tigers. And I don't know if passing can stay with Henderson. No. They had Griffin and Washington out in much of the night. And that gave all kinds of trouble. Let's see if they'll free it up for him now. Nolly wants it inside against Faulkner. Now he moves outside. Caesar, seven on the shot clock. Henderson's going to have to loft one, maybe. Here it comes. Way off balance. Shot clock violation. And now LSU saying it hit the rim. The official saying it didn't. It hit the backboard, I think. I don't know if it hit the rim. Ronnie Henderson had to throw up a prayer. As LSU used too much clock, Henderson had to throw one up there. It came off. Brett, I thought it hit the backboard. I don't think it hit the rim. I don't think it hit the rim either, but the officials are having a chat about it right now. It looked like it went all the way across the rim and hit the weak side of the backboard. And they might have just said to LSU's bench, you're right. Let's see. No, that ball never hit. It went across the basket and hit the board. I thought it did, too. David Hobbs upset, and maybe rightfully so. At any rate, we've got a timeout. We'll clear it all up when we come back with Alabama in front by one. State Farm prison. Wake Forest in Georgia Tech tied at 62 apiece, and they start to make their move. Barry finds Matt Harfring underneath. He lays it up and in. Travis Best with a couple of free throws. 66-62 the lead. Here it's 45-44 Alabama with 11.25 left in the game. And LSU will get a fresh clock and a fresh basketball. There was another angle look of that heave up there by Ronnie Henderson. And quite frankly, Larry and I think agreed did not hit the rim, but came close enough that the officials questioned their judgment. I guess in poetic justice, Alabama gets the ball back. Well, I am a contaminator there. <laughs> it's always going to go back and forth across <laughs> midcourt. Inside is Faulkner. And he got mugged by Johnson. Boy, Alabama really pushes the ball to the inside. It's not McDyess, it's not Cavney, it's not Faulkner. Sometimes it's Washington. Passing was a good with a good pass inside, good turn away from the defense. You can see Johnson coming across trying to help. And once again, Faulkner draws the foul and goes to the line. Passing with a nice entry pass. They're not particularly choosy about who they get it to down there, are they? No, and, and as I said, those four guys, all four of them, really reside well down on that block. Mm -hmm. They get it, they turn, they're quick to the basket. While McDyess is the bigger of the four and gets there in a hurry, the other three are pretty adept at moving inside on their block. Parker started to pick up the scoring here in the second half. Seven of his nine points since intermission. 47-44, Alabama. Under 11 minutes to go. Livingston and Orange collide. And Marvin Orange... It's the worst of that. But does it tell you a little bit that Mark Norris was not able to keep up with Randy Livingston, who was hobbled in about 80 percent, just how quick Livingston would have been if he'd have been 100 percent? Right. And Orange is quick. I mean, he is not slow. I saw that a little bit last night with the Georgetown game with Allen Iverson, who severely hurt his ankle really early in that game and still would have moments of just jetting by guys. Henderson off the inbounds. Had a good look at a three. Caesar cleans up. Faulkner and McDyess were battling each other, and they lost it, and Caesar got it. I got it. You take it. Caesar scores it. Got another one of those gems in the junkyard. Uh-huh. Clean up underneath. Faulkner wanted an alley-oop underneath. And Johnson's going to pick up another one inside. Now he picks up two quick fouls. Remember, he's in there because Rubchenko has already fouled out. And also the fact that the top hits has got four. There's the foul situation for both clubs. Yeah, one of the things you got to realize if you're Mutavich, if you've been in this country playing basketball, he's a transfer from Wagner. If you want to play, don't foul. You know, learn to play the game without fouling. Otherwise, you're going to go sit down. Henderson got down court. 
Try as he might, McDice couldn't get back to do anything about it and fouls Henderson a chance for a three-point play. Talk about quickness. Boy, this guy has got ultra quickness. Get the ball in his hands and watch him operate. First lead of the half for LSU. Now they can extend it. Henderson caps off an original three-point play here. He only has one three-point field goal tonight, but we said they're going to need more of him in this half as the SEC's leading scorer, and he's delivered nine of his points have come since intermission. Missed the free throw, though, passing the rebound. Side. Faulkner trying to pop out, but Henderson right there with him. Terrence Bethel now playing the point with Orange on the bench. Bad Passing. switch. Passing gets free like that again. He'll lock the three. Six on the shot clock. They switch him back. Bethel just throws one up there. Johnson knocked it away. Henderson and Nolly will run. Nolly try to get it back to Henderson and passing foul. All of a sudden, LSU's come to life. You know, Brad, in this situation, when you've got a play like that, when you're going down on the break, it looks like LSU's going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, right here, watch Nolly pass the ball. Don't make the pass. Go up. When you know you're going to be fouled, you want two shots on this deal. Don't give the ball up to somebody when you know you're going to draw that foul. Now he gets the one-on-one -on -one instead of the two. So he's going to have to earn them. Landers Nolly steps up. 6'7", Jr. out of Atlanta by way of Hiawassee Junior College in Tennessee. And there's the difference between a one-and-one and, one and a two-shot free throw situation. He missed badly on the first one, and Alabama's got it back with a chance to regain the lead. Nine and a half minutes to go. There's the man that led him in the first half, Artie Griffin. And he thought about lofting one from outside the arc. And Natalie Faulkner instead. Just inside the strike for Faulkner. Nice pass by Caffey. He threw the defense to him, and when he did, he popped the ball right back out to Faulkner. Got a whistle here. And a wet spot. Yep. You got to look for that wet spot. Well, make sure you clean it up. You don't want anybody hurt out there. Watch Faulkner go outside. Caffey with a terrific pass, and Faulkner is deadly from there. 11 points for Jamal Faulkner right on his average. He's giving Alabama the lead back. What's Livingston? He wants it against Bethel inside. He's got a big height to bend. Caesar's a good three-point shooter, too. Inside the strike, he buries a deuce. But what a nice thing for LSU to have Clarence Caesar back in the lineup. Passed those 19 hours to get eligible. Dale Brown told us, what, do you have a 2-7 on the 19? And he says it was just laziness. That's his academic problem. Well, he got it done that semester. Yes, he did. Came back for the Oklahoma State game. And since he's been back, it's been an improved team because of his senior leadership. LSU on the run. Johnson lost the handle. Still a battle going on in the corner. It'll be LSU ball. I'll tell you what, I saw some bullet passes going on around there, particularly in the corner in front of that LSU bench. Caesar took one on the backside. They're going to get it back, because they said Alabama was out of bounds with the ball. Now you start wearing a helmet on the bench the way that thing can fly. 8.19 to go. One point game. Livingston squares off and looks at Griffin and goes right over the top. Got it. Randy Livingston saying, I'll take over. This young man did that against Auburn last week. When they were in trouble and the Tigers were making a run at him, the Tigers of LSU came back, and it was Randy Livingston that led them down the stretch. Livingston and Henderson in that game Larry's talking about scored 18 of the final 21 points. And the foul out of Alabama. Faulkner, and now he's got foul problems. That's four on him. 
Now this game has swung so many times. Remember moments ago, it seems like Alabama led 41 to 31. Now it's 53-49 LSU. That's an 18 to 8 spurt for the Tigers. Yeah, but I really don't think this LSU team can go much beyond seven players, and they've already lost one, so they're down to six. And Alonzo Johnson does not play a great deal. Look at that Henderson rebound. And he goes up against four Crimson Tide players and draws a foul. Ronnie Henderson averages 23 points a game and six rebounds a game, and you can see why. I mean, he gets up so high. He's got great lift when he goes up. Springs in the legs. LSU struggling from the line? You bet you. Four straight misses for LSU from the free throw line. And now five. That will kill you. Or at least come back to haunt you late in the game. 7.40 left. The thing is, you don't want to give Alabama a chance to get back. Walker all alone. That's just inside the three-point line. 13 for Faulkner. 53-51. Coleman Coliseum comes to life again for the tie. These fans, a big reason this club's 120 straight at home. They know that. Henderson and Livingston in the same spot. Now Henderson comes clear, but misses in close, and Faulkner the rebound. Alabama can tie. Caffey. Defensive effort out front by Alabama to push Henderson inside, get the shot, come back, Caffey with the basket. We've got an SEC tie with 6.52 to play. Caffey's first field goal comes with seven minutes left in the ball game, and it's a huge one. Livingston had it blocked by Griffin. Caffey pulls it down. Here comes a tie. Caffey, jump stop, missed the jumper. Caesar now for LSU with Nolly to his left. And he threw it away. We've got a timeout, and we've got a tie game with 6.34 to go. Attention sports fans, when you need a score on any game, call Scores Coast to Coast, the fastest sports scores in New Orleans. You also get weather, injury reports, and trends on every game. Everything a serious sports fan needs absolutely free on a recorded message. In the New Orleans area, call 504-588-2600. That's 588-2600. This is a free call. Quick, someone just scored. Call Scores Coast to Coast. Tick's price is right. It's University of New Orleans Privateer Basketball, and new head coach Tick Price has a special deal for young families. Tick's price. For just $103, a family of four can see the entire season of UNO Privateer Basketball. Call 286-6100 for all the details. Plus, Tick has the best value on individual game tickets, too. Call 286-6100 now because... Tick's price is right! It's incredible! This man is trying to sound like Dick Vitale. Why? Because he could win big in the ESPN Mountain Dew. Hey, you sound like Dickie B contest. Shoot the rock, baby! Send a video of your best Dick Vitale, and you could go to college basketball championship weekend. I can't believe it! Then compete with other Dick wannabes for a C2, a C of Mountain Dew, and a C in a 95 game with Dick himself. Hey, you're good, baby! Send us your Dickie B video for your chance to win the trip and the whole shebang. Quite a finish in the ACC. Travis Best, an 85% free throw shooter, made the first and misses the second, so it's a two-point game. Wake trying to come back. Randolph Childress, the length of the floor, throws it up. Travis banks them with a tip, just doesn't go. Drew Barry finished with 18 points and six assists, the two-point win. Talk about surviving a scare. Alabama's had all of LSU they want with 634 left tie game. First tie of the second half. And Ronnie Henderson, we said he would have to come to the forefront in the second half, and he has. Steal by Nally. Oh, LSU is so good defensively down inside now. We've got some quickness down in there. Foul on Washington, and that will be it for him. 
Henderson was trying to make a cut baseline and couldn't get through because Washington basically forearmed him with both forearms. Is Eric Washington? Is that five? That's what I had him for. It is. So we have one player from each team that is gone. Marvin Orange will check back in. Tough loss for Alabama because Eric Washington's the leading scorer for this tag club. And what they've got now is Marvin Orange, more of a defender and handler and not much of a scorer. Somebody's going to have to pick up that slack. Although Washington was not very good from the field tonight. Here's David Hobbs wondering exactly what he's going to do. Ronnie Henderson snaps a streak of three straight misses from the free throw line. A dozen for Ronnie Henderson. LSU has definitely warmed it up. They've doubled what they did in the first half. The SEC's leading scorer has 13 points now. And it's 55-53 LSU. Getting to that point where almost every possession becomes a little bigger than the previous one. Orange trying to look for McDyess against Mutavich. He's got four. Work on him. Did they call it? Whistle and a foul. It's going to be on Nolly, though. Dell Champ Senior Bowl is coming up this weekend, and the Hula Bowl as well. Saturday, 2 p.m., the Senior Bowl. Steve McNair might be his biggest game. Huh? He'll join Alabama's Jay Barker and Sherman Williams. They'll strut their stuff in front of the pro scouts. And then we will take you to the Hula Bowl at 8 o'clock on Sunday night. And uh, that one will be interesting because... Mike Gottfried will coach one team. Lee Corso will coach the other. And then when you put Danielson and I in the booth to second guess every conceivable coaching move, that alone could be fun. <laughs> so maybe you might take another some little beach walks over there, huh? You'll love that. Some great players in that game, too. So we've got our final two football games of the weekend coming up this week on ESPN. 55 apiece. Good double team. Good ball movement by LSU. Nolly, three. Caesar will try it in close. McDice the rebound. Tied at 55. Orange, three. Caesar. That tough inside play of the season. Good Alley on the run. Boy, I'll tell you, Livingston with a head up, looking, ever looking, he's got that radar scan. When he sees a blip, it's there. The ball is in the hand of the guy going to the hoop. He wasn't exactly Mr. Assist Man in that first half, but I tell you what, he's taken it to another level here in the second half and helped LSU to the lead. And now Alabama turns it over again. LSU with Livingston's got another assist. The steal, the assist. Randy Livingston is picking this club up again. And the Tigers in front by four. Four minutes and 47 seconds remaining. Livingston and his teammates make it look easy. This one to Caesar, and it's 59-55. With Dodge Neon's dual airbags and side impact beams, the question isn't safety. With a Neon Sport Coupe's 150 peak horsepower engine and fully independent... Horse or pig. 47 left in Tuscaloosa. 59-55 LSU. And Clarence Caesar, what a second half the senior has had. 10 points and 7 boards just in the second half. And that's that senior leadership they needed to come to the forefront. Boy, he's delivered, Larry. Yeah, and you got to remember, this is the guy that was not around for the early part of the season for the Tigers, but he has really stepped it up. You know, Dale Brown may be right. This club is starting to come together, and they're starting to learn each other. The chemistry, the blend is looking much better for this LSU. LSU team. There's only three guys on this LSU team that even played against Alabama last year. So if you consider that, it does take a while. 
Oranger out of pick, three-pointer. Livingston the rebound. Livingston content to slow the pace a bit. And now picks it up on his own drive. LSU ball, fresh 35 and 4-12 left in the game. And Cottage with a good battle underneath with Caffey. Up inside with Kathy and Mutavich, and you've got McDyson and Caesar on the other side. Molly couldn't shake past him. Caesar thought about getting it to Mutavich and does. And he wheels and gives it right back. Caesar underneath, a dozen this half. Well, that's great interior passing. Mutavich working it with Caesar inside. Great communication. Biggest lead since it was 18 to 11 in the first half. LSU is up by six. They're trying to get the ball inside, but they're having difficulty. Caesar Mutavich doing a great job defending. Look at Caesar guarding McDice. McDice wants the lob. Bad angle. Griffin faded on a three-pointer. Not a good shot. Henderson had it stripped by Griffin and a foul on Artie. Watch the good two-man game down on the inside. The Caesar Mutavich doing a great job of communicating. Mutavich cut off by Caffey. He sees him with McDice right there. And then the good move to the inside as Caesar went strong to the basket. That's the reason Misha's got that haircut. No hair to get in his eyes through those great passes. Yeah, that was a good roll to the basket, too. Caesar is all over this court in the second half. Ronnie Henderson, 13 points. Well off his average. But he's starting to find the range from the free throw line. After missing three straight, he's hit three in a row. LSU inside. Just the opposite, really, that you would think the game would go. That happens sometimes. Yeah, but they've had great effort tonight from Mutavich to Caesar. Eight-point ball game, 63-55. And now Alabama's got to start to score and score in a relatively short amount of time. 3.20 to play. Blocked by Matavich as Griffin tried to go to the hole, and Nolly pushes it. Henderson. Passick stripped it. Nolly got it and nailed it. Oh, Nolly right there when they needed that. Oh, Caesar fell and hurt his ankle. Caesar down the left ankle. He already has the shoe halfway off. Now you're telling him, said, not, not now. Leave the shoe there. Yeah, well, that would be a tough loss for them because uh, he has played so well in the second half tonight. And I think really responsible for putting LSU in a position to win this game. Too. His defensive work has been as strong as his offense. Let's see if we can see what happens. He worked the baseline and he got tangled with McDice. I think obviously what he did was step on McDice's foot. And he rolled over on <laughs> he said, he said to uh, Alonzo Johnson, just get in his way for 30 seconds, as if to say, I'm retaping and I'll be back out there. <laughs> That's a great line. Get in his way for 30 seconds. Instructions from one teammate to another. Mm -hmm. A 10-point LSU lead. Biggest of the night with under three to go. They got to go in a hurry now. Can't waste any time. When you're down 10, you've got to get points in a hurry. Nobody moving. Fans are even getting restless. Passing. Dave Hobbs needs a timeout right now. Passing took a three. Nolly with a rebound. LSU's lead. Ball in hand. And ball in the guy that's the leader of the team, even though he's only a redshirt freshman, Livingston. He's going to use a little clock with Orange right on him. Good idea. What a comeback by LSU in the second half. Tremendous comeback. Nally with 10 on the shot clock. Henderson 
Needs a pick. Gives it back to Livingston. He'll have to pump one up. They may not get a shot off at all. Nolly at the buzzer and got it. A three-pointer of all things. Great use of the clock. Time management. LSU knows how to do it. All the way down to the clock going off with the ball in the air and then burying a three-pointer. And now an offensive foul on Caffey the other way. And the tide is going out. And so are their fans. Timeout with 153 remaining in the ballgame. Talk about using all 30.